Alright folks, so today we are doing a video on Baofeng programming cables and the reason we're doing this is I get a lot of questions about these programming cables and it seems to be one of the most difficult aspects of programming your Baofeng radio when you use software like Chirp. Uh, lots of people have problems and that's because they get bad uh, cables, fake cables, counterfeit cables and uh, we're going to go into that. We're going to talk about what you can do if you do get a bad cable and, and how you can avoid getting a bad cable uh, when you purchase one. So here I've got a stack of cables and uh, we're going to talk about a bunch of them. Alright, so let's talk about the two main types of programming cables. Prolific and FTDI. There are other cables out there, but they're less common and uh, we're not going to talk about them. Both of these types are counterfeited. Most of them that are counterfeit are the prolific chipset. Um, the companies have taken some protective measures in that their newer or updated drivers actually disable counterfeit chipsets. And that's caused some problems for people. That's typically what the problem is when you have a counterfeit prolific cable. Um, neither cable is better, but uh, what you do need is the correct driver. Now, with the prolific drivers, legacy drivers that were developed before the protective measures were put in place may work for your counterfeit cable. Now people will say, hey, how do I avoid getting a counterfeit cable? And the easiest way is to buy this cable. It's the BTEC FTDI cable. It's a little bit more expensive, but BTEC is a, a very reputable company when it comes to uh, ham radios and handy talkies. And uh, they, these are legitimate. I've never heard of anybody having a problem with them. The other thing is, is that you won't need to install any drivers. Your Windows installation should detect this. Um, it's also detected on, I've never tried it on Mac OS, so I don't know, but it's also detected on Linux every time. Never had an issue here. Another cable that I do want to mention are the prolific cables from Redivis. They seem to work fine, but you have to make sure that you're buying it from a legitimate Redivis retailer. Okay, so now you might be saying, I've already got a cable. I don't know if it's a clone. I don't know if it's a counterfeit. It's not working. Windows didn't detect anything or Windows detected it, but it's broken. What can I do? Well, I'm going to direct you over to MickLore.com. He has a fantastic website that has tons of information on ham radio, especially handy talkies. And he goes into, he goes into great detail about Balfangs and programming them and how to use the cables. Um, you want to make sure that you have the right drivers and he has a link to the drivers that you need. And you want to make sure that you get the drivers that are correct for your OS. As I've mentioned, Windows should detect legitimate cables, no problem. Mac, you can install the drivers for Prolific. I've done that in the past, and it's a little bit of a pain. Mickelore has the instructions to do that, so we're not going to go over them here. And then with Linux, I've had no problems with legitimate Prolific or FTDI cables after just plugging them into a Linux installation. It works fine. So here we are with the Baofeng UV5R and a programming cable. Now one of the biggest things that I see are people don't plug these cables in all the way. So if you take a look at the radio end, you have two prongs, one for speaker and one for microphone. The other end of the cable has a USB-A that attaches directly to your laptop or computer. You have to make sure that both cables are firmly seated to the computer and to your radio. So on the side of your radio, you'll see a port where the cable goes gently but firmly insert the cable there and then really give it a push to make sure it's in all the way. Speaking from experience, you will try to program a radio and have a problem because that cable is not pushed in all the way. So as mentioned, I've used both types of these cables. In this instance, we're on Windows 10 and we've just plugged in a prolific cable and in the lower corner you can see a message come up saying setting up the device. Keep in mind this is a legitimate cable. I want to go to my device manager to see what port this is going to be operating on and to make sure that the device is working correctly. So I do that and when I get a list of attached devices I go down to port, I go down to common LPT ports and here I can see that something is being set up right now. Now in the lower corner again you see the device is ready and you can see that it's displaying as a prolific driver. It says it's working properly so I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to program my radio. So earlier in the video I mentioned the MickLore.com website and there'll be a link below along with links where you can buy some of the products that were used in this video. But his website does a fantastic job explaining this entire situation and is a great set of resources. So if you go down you'll see important notes where he talks about the clones and the chipsets, talks about the FTDI chips typically working, 
and then he talks about the false positives that you may experience with uh, newer prolific derivers. Some of the other things that he does is he shows you how to determine which cable you have and how to install your, your backdated drivers. Here's a link to all the drivers that you would need along with the associated instructions. John's really done a fantastic job putting together this resource for everyone to use. The instructions are pretty detailed, but some of the screenshots might be from a little bit older version of Windows. You should be able to figure everything out though by going through the instructions. And that's it everybody. I want to say thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments or stories about cables you've used in the past, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again.